Hi, and welcome back to Glassboxed, writing automated protector tests. This is the first video in a series of videos yet to come, where we will use protector to write end-to-end -end tests. So, what is protector? Well, protector is a Node.js program that is used to write end-to-end -end tests, tests which are written in JavaScript to simulate user stories on a web browser. Protector effectively is built upon WebDriver. So a lot of the stuff we do in Protector will seem very similar to what we do using WebDriver. So since this is the first video, the first thing we will do is actually set up our environment to be able to run Protector tests. So this video will be effectively divided into a few things. We'll first download the necessary things we need to download. We'll then install each program and make sure it's installed correctly. And then as a proof of concept, we'll run a really basic test just to make sure everything is set up. So on my machine, I haven't installed any of these components just yet, other than if I explicitly say I have. But it won't really affect you in any way. So let's begin. So the first thing we need to do is download a browser that we will run our tests against. And I've chosen to download Google Chrome. So to download Google Chrome, open a new tab and search for Chrome. So from this page, just download Chrome and install it. Now this is the one step that I won't do because I've already installed Chrome on my machine. The next thing we need to do is download and install Node.js. So open a new tab, search for Node, and the link we want to go to is Node.js. So Node.js is, as it says here, it's just an event-driven, lightweight and efficient program that we can use to build applications and is used to run across distributed devices. If you want to find out more about it, have a look here. So we're just going to go ahead and press this install button, which will allow us to download the file. Right, now that the download is completed, we'll just run it. So when you see the node.js setup screen, uh, just hit the next button. Make sure you read all of this. Uh, I've already read it. set whichever path you want to install to. I usually leave it as the default. So these are important nodes. These are basically the custom uh, setups you can change if you want. I usually don't change them. But the important thing here to note is that this installer will also install our npm package manager. The npm package manager is used to manage node installations. We'll look at this in a little bit more detail afterwards. The other important note to add is it adds node to our path. So hit the next button, hit install. Once you've finished the installation, just hit the finish button. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure if node actually installed correctly on our machines. We're going to run a few commands just to make sure it's done. To check node, we're going to use a console window to make sure everything's fine. So just open up your CMD window. So once you've got it open, the first thing you want to do is type in npm dash dash version. And this should print out a version of npm. So if you get a version printout, that means you've actually installed npm correctly and the paths have been set up. So a little bit more about npm. So node is, like I said, it's just a JavaScript framework that is used to manage uh, nodes that we install. There are various different types of nodes that we can install, where one of them is protector. So the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to install protector. To do that, type in npm install dash minus g. This minus g argument stands for global space protractor. So what does this mean? This means we're using npm, i.e. the node package manager, to install protractor globally. So when we say globally, what this basically means is if we install protector using this dash g argument, it allows us to access protector from anywhere. We don't have to be in a specific location to be able to use protector. When you also run this npm install protector, it generates a node modules directory under your user drive. And that is where protector is actually installed. So if you hit enter, this will now go off and install Protector. This could potentially take some time, 
but it shouldn't take too long. So now, what we're going to do is make sure that we've actually installed Protector. And the way you can do it is to check the version of Protector you're running. You can achieve that by typing in Protector, forward dash two times, and then version. And that should give you the version of the Protector you're running. Also confirming that you've installed Protector on your machine. Something else you can do, on a side note, it's going to list all the nodes you have installed under Node Package Manager. So if you say npm dash g, i.e. globally pick up anything we have installed, space list and hit enter. This gives you a list of all the nodes you have installed, just in case you need to look them up for any particular reason. So we've got protector installed because since we've just installed this, and we've got a couple of other nodes that might be of interest to you, uh, maybe later on. Something else to note, when we actually install Protector, we also install Selenium WebDriver. And we will need Selenium WebDriver to run our test. So let's go ahead and close this window, since we don't need it for the moment. Now, we've just installed Node, and we've just installed Protector. As a quick recap, Protector is going to act as our WebDriver. Protector is the framework you use to run end-to-end -end test on a web browser on a web browser when you have protector is if protector is the framework that will be used to run end-to-end -end tests on a web browser using our JavaScript written tests however to run protector you actually need to run selenium server as well to run Selenium Server, you have to have Java. In particular, you have to have the Java JDK installed on your machines. So the next thing we're going to do is actually install Java JDK. So just do a quick search for it. And we'll find the JDK under www.oracle.com. And we'll just go ahead and install the latest one. So save the file. Right, so once you've finished downloading the JDK, just go ahead and install it. So on the first screen, hit the next button. And the next again. On the destination folder screen, hit the next button. And once you see the successfully installed window then you're done so just uh, go ahead and close the window so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to open up a console window again just to confirm that java has been installed so go ahead and open one and once you've got it opened just type in java forward dash just the one time and then version and that should print out the version of Java you're currently running. So as long as you get a version running, that means you've installed Java correctly as well. So now that we have installed Java, we need to run Selenium Server in order to run our protector test. That's what we're going to do now. So when we installed protector via our Node Package Manager, it also installed WebDriver Manager. The next thing we need to do is actually run WebDriver Manager. But before we do that, we're first going to run WebDriver Manager update. So just type in WebDriver forward dash manager update. What this will do is this will update our instance of WebDriver Manager that we currently have, or in other words, update the version and pull in any necessary libraries. So just go ahead and press enter. So you may have noticed. It's also saying updating Chrome driver. By default, WebDriver Manager uses our Chrome driver to run our tests. That is why we installed Chrome as the very first step. Although you can change this if you want. But let's leave that for another video. So now that we've successfully updated our driver, we're going to run WebDriver Manager start so that it starts the server for us. So to do that, it's very similar to the update. 
in that we just as opposed to typing in update we just type in start so that's web driver for dash uh, sorry dash manager space start and this now starts our selenium server so let's just put that to a side for the moment because now we can go ahead and actually run a protector test since we now have our web driver manager running so before we actually run our test let's take a step back and discuss what we've just done we've installed Chrome so that we've got a browser to run our test against we installed node which allowed us to install protector via the NPM and then we installed our Java JDK so that we're able to run our web driver manager so the final thing that remains is to actually run a protector test now luckily when you actually install protector via NPM fortunately for us it actually also installs a dummy test for us so there's already a ready-made test for us to run right off the bat which means installing protector and making sure it works it just makes it that much easier for us on our end so to do that what we will need to do is we will need to navigate to the node modules directory so I mentioned earlier in this video when we install protector it installs it under a node modules directory inside the protector module we'll look for an examples folder and in that folder we should have an example test so let's go ahead and locate that directory now by default your node modules should be installed under your user directory so open up CMD and we'll navigate to it via our console window so on a Windows environment it's actually installed under your users directory so let's go to CD users and then the user that you are currently signed is as so in my case it's MUDDIM and then in here your information is actually installed under a hidden directory called app data so if we do cd app data and then just do a quick listing on that we want to go into roaming and then in roaming we want to go into npm and when in your npm directory we want to go into our node modules directory so quickly recapping when we installed protector this is a directory it installed in so quickly go into it and if we do a directory listing on this we can now see the protector folder inside it so go into that as well and now in here we have this examples directory so let's go in there and quickly do a directory listing on, in that so here are the configurations which are used to run a test so really quickly in this video we're gonna we're not gonna look at this test as I feel it's slightly outside the scope of this video in this video we're only interested in making sure our environment is set up up and running so to actually run a test we are going to run this conf.js file which is a javascript file using our protector so if you type in protector space and then the conf file and hit run this will check that our selenium server is running it will then open a chrome window it will then run the test that protector provides us with and then finish off the test so some information about the test this conf.js file is a javascript file when we run it it's a configuration file that is used to run a test 
it basically runs this example underscore spec test which navigates to the angular js site and runs three tests against it and five assertions and in the end it gives us an output after doing all the installations if you were able to run this test and see an outcome similar to this i.e. when you run the test it opens up a chrome browser it does a few things it closes automatically and you see an output then you have successfully installed protector and run a test using a javascript configuration so if you've reached this far in the video without any problems congratulations you've just run your first protector test give yourself a pat on the back so let's quickly recap we installed chrome chrome is going to be used to run our end-to-end -end tests against we installed node which in turn installed npm we used npm to install protector we then checked to see that we were able to check the version of protector confirming that protector was installed we then installed java jdk which in turn allowed us to run an update on our web driver after that we started the web driver to make sure that our web driver was running and then we navigated to this example configuration JavaScript test that Protector provides you with after you install Protector and we run the test. And in the end, what happened was it opened up a Chrome browser, did a few tests, closed it, and gave us an output. And that's it for this video, folks. The next video will focus much more on what this configuration file is and what the example test is, and we'll take a much more greater look at that. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, thanks a lot for watching my video. If you already haven't, hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with my latest videos which I release every Wednesdays and Sundays. Also follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Until next time, ciao.